that that exchange that she has with Kerrigan about to find a way to take this away from me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want it is foreshadowing. Gotcha. And I think that's why it's in there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could see why it's kind of hard to buy that. Oh, you don't want to be part of um, the movement that frees your people that ends this war, which was horrible. This is how your parents got killed and you don't want to have to do anything with it. You just want to sit it out kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's there for a reason. From both from both perspectives, though, like even if I'm cynical uh, and even if I were to assume cynical motivations on her part, I mean, I know it's dangerous, but God, like you're you're just went from being treated like absolute shit to being the most valuable person in the empire you know, or kingdom, whatever Ravka is. I, I, I don't know the actual term. Um, and, and I get why there would be hesitation, but I feel like you'd be a little more conflicted uh in a world where things are hard you know like I, I, it just if you're wise you'd have trepidation about it obviously because as we know with hindsight of history and living in a modern republic you know like even being nobility or royalty still kind of sucked in its own way back in the day because it was inherently dangerous but i don't know i don't know i feel like it, her reaction is a little too one-sided but again like i still like the show i still I didn't think the character was unrealistic entirely in her reactions. I just, I don't know. I, I, in her shoes, I'd be like, I'd be at least tempted by the comfort. <laughs> well, I, I don't think we've seen her get, or she knows where she's going. She knows she's going to the little palace, but I don't think she's been introduced to what that actually means when she and Kirigan are having that argument because they haven't gotten there yet. Fair enough. So, Fair enough. So I think that part of it is I, I can justify it as a writer. Gotcha. Okay, she just got. She just uh, had this huge discovery that she's Grisha, and if you looked at that entire sequence at the beginning where he tests her, mm -hmm. um, and he, he pricks her arm and light comes out of it, that mm -hmm. would freak me out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you see, her reactions are the exact opposite of his. He's mm -hmm. fascinated. He can't believe what he's got, and she's mm -hmm. terrified. Yeah. And then they hustle her into this coach with these strange people and they separate her from everybody. And then the Fjordans come along and they shoot at her. Yeah. And then, and then the, the Darkling comes along. He beheads the Fjordan with that, that cut. It's called with cut. Magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that magic. So she's just watched this guy just be sliced, you know, diagonally like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see why she's, I could see why she's freaking out. Yeah. Um, I definitely appreciate the freak out. Like, I think that's, that's valid. Um, she just, yeah. Go on, go on. Though. I don't, I don't want to derail you. Oh, and I would just think it's, it's that whole trope of the hero turning away from the call to adventure. That too. It's very this Campbellian. This is where we are in the story. Yep. And yeah, I, I, I don't know that in real life it would make sense. And we might look at her as, um, you you she doth protest too much. Is that how it goes? <laughs> um, but from a, story, a storytelling perspective, this is exactly what it's, it's, it's just like Luke Skywalker going, oh no, I cannot go to wherever with you, Ben. Yes, I've wished for it all my life, but no, I'm going to say no, because mm -hmm. something has to have to push me into going. 